All right, YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney. It's 9.30 at night, and I had to travel travel back to the hobby farm from New York City today, so I'm grumpy. Um, but there's an attorney being shitty on the internet, and so I must I must make a video. Uh, we're being joined tonight by guest star Talisker Storm, which is not as bougie as our last guest star, but is still delightful and does, in fact, taste like the perfect campfire. <clears throat> it's a very, very smoky scotch. All right, so on this channel, we answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users, getting folks the answer they need from an employment attorney. Clearly, uh, I need to give the disclaimer that I've had two drinks today and all of my advice should be taken um, in that context. We have a person who comes to us through a... Uh, a Facebook group kind of dedicated to helping people who have brought workplace discrimination and workplace sexual harassment uh, claims. I mean, I'll provide a little bit of background. So this person, we'll call him Mr. Anonymous, um, hired an attorney for what I believe was a workplace discrimination claim. I'm going to keep this very anonymous. That attorney... Uh, I, I believe ultimately arranged a settlement of that case for $10,000, a settlement offer for that case for $10,000. Mr. Anonymous declined. And that attorney who he had hired then said, well, then I'm dropping you as a client. And cited the only, the only reasoning was that we are at an impasse, which essentially just means that the client didn't accept the last offer, right? Very concerning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, Mr. Anonymous then reached out to the CEO of his former employer after his lawyer withdrew from the case and negotiated a better package, a better settlement than the 10000 that was on offer through the attorney, to which I say, well done. Now, here's where it gets, I mean, it's already kind of unfortunate. That's not a great showing for that attorney, obviously. But that attorney found out about the settlement that Mr. Anonymous negotiated for himself and said, hey, hey, I want my third. I want, give me my third. I want my third in three days or else. So Mr. Anonymous contacted me and I did review a little bit of the documentation here. I'm not going to reference any of it. I also took a little bit of time while I was in the air to review this attorney's resume. It is academically very impressive. I will say that. The academics are um, far and above. 6x more impressive than my own, just to be upfront. The work credentials, less so. Um, in terms of working in this field, close to non-existent. The credentials are just not there. Um, it doesn't appear that this individual has a wealth of knowledge in this industry. And the facial hair is, it's questionable. It's questionable. It's not, it's not, some poor decisions are being made, uh, in terms of the aesthetics of this attorney, but that being said, we, we've all made mistakes, right? So obviously Mr. Anonymous does not want to pay a third to this attorney because the attorney dumped Mr. Anonymous's case. And I would say that's probably fair. And my advice to Mr. Anonymous would be to say, if they have this in your state, and I don't know what state you're in, but I'm going I'm to answer this question as if you're in New York State because it is a state that I'm most familiar with this process in. Where there's a conflict between an attorney and a client with respect to how much of a fee was earned, just put it to fee dispute. There's a fee dispute process provided by the Bar Association in many jurisdictions where a panel of attorneys versed in the ethics of fee structuring are provided for free by the Bar Association to determine what the reasonable fee would be in a given case. Now, I'm inclined to say 
that I would think a reasonable fee might be zero dollars. Because of course the attorney dropped the case not for some wrongdoing. The attorney dropped the case merely because the attorney did not want to proceed forward. All right, the client, the client said, I, I don't want that settlement. And the attorney said, I wash my hands of you. <sighs> Is that a retainer agreement that you can structure? Sure. Sure. You can do a settlement only retainer agreement. That that's common in our industry. I, I think it's a bad decision. I think it's bad for the attorneys to do. I think it's bad for the brand. And I question why clients are so eager for those uh, those retainer agreements. Right? Clients threaten me because I won't enter into those retainer agreements on the regular. People get mad. People cry. People scream. People say horrible things. Um, but those retainer agreements are silly because there's no enforcement. You're saying, I might do bad things to you if you don't give my client money. And defense counsel, who likely knows you to be someone who does exactly what you're engaged in on that given moment, says, okay, go ahead. We're done. But representation's over. There's no no settlement to be had because everyone knows this is, and I don't know this particular attorney, but generally attorneys who do that sort of thing are known quantities and people know that they're not actually going to file. So their threats don't carry a great deal of weight. So I, you know, I'm generally not a fan of those retainer agreements and I'm not a fan of attorneys who dump cases and then expect to get paid, right? Uh, Aston, I, I don't know if you can hear my cat. She is also not a fan. She has some thoughts. She's being a little vocal about this. She's uh, she's riled up, if I'm being honest. She's a little grumpy. So I would urge you to go to fee dispute. If that's not available to you, I would tell that attorney that you're happy to discuss the fee in arbitration or in litigation, but you don't think that attorney has earned it. Now, I don't know what what kind of settlement you arranged for yourself. If it's sizable, one of the things you could do is say, hey, you can have 3000 on the $10,000 you arranged, but I arranged the rest. You don't get any percentage on that. I did that. That might be a settlement offer. I wouldn't love to see you make that settlement because I don't think that attorney really deserves that money. But that being said, it would be easier potentially to come to that settlement. I can't imagine this attorney is going to push for more because I don't really think this attorney will win a push for more. I would think this attorney might not even win a third of the 10000 he arranged. I could be wrong. Every jurisdiction is different. And you never know what a judge or an ethical board or an arbitrator might do. So I, you know, I'm not going to tell you the future, but I'm going to tell you that <clears throat> I said as an arbitrator, if this attorney came before me, I would probably award them somewhere between zero and fifteen hundred dollars. Right? They did some work. They did some work, right? I mean, I get it. They did work. They should get paid for their work. I presume they might have sent two letters and done a phone call. I'm hearing three, maybe four hours. This attorney has no credentials almost whatsoever, so I assume their hourly rate might be $150, $200 an hour. They're in the middle of nowhere, it appears. So that's not fair. It's not fair. It's not that they're in the middle of nowhere. They're, they're not in a, a major city, perhaps. We'll say that. Maybe they are. I, you know, I... But I, I suspect attorney rates might be a little cheaper where they are. And especially the rates of attorneys who have no experience in a given field. So I'd probably urge that attorney to settle that case. $500, $1,000. And I don't know where I'd come down. Ultimately, if this case did not settle, if it went to decision and I had to decide that case, I don't know. It's tough. I mean, at the end of the day, the attorney didn't want to do the work and dump the case. And the client did the work himself and made the money. And then I have to ask myself, why would the attorney get a piece of the money that he didn't arrange? Right? That third isn't free, Mr. Attorney. It's not free. You got to work for it. You got to help people to make the money. 
And even when you really help them and you make them lots of money, they're still going to hate you for it. So get used to that. But here, you didn't actually help. So I'm not sure you should get paid. Um, so Mr. Anonymous, I urge you to take these threats from the attorney with a grain of salt. Consider making a settlement offer of some kind. If you find that palatable, it will make things easier. If you don't, I would look into your options for fighting this. Uh, and if they appear to be beneficial to you, I would urge the attorney, like, yeah, go ahead, file. Let's see what happens. Um, I don't know if your attorney has the ability to hold up your settlement. Sometimes that's something that happens. If they have a good relationship or even any relationship with uh, defense counsel. Often defense counsel will hold up the settlement for the plaintiff's attorney. That could be an issue, so you may need to deal with this based on that. I don't know. Something to look at, something to talk about with defense counsel or even the CEO. I, I doubt the CEO cares at all, right? CEO's like, yeah, I don't care. That's, I mean, this, to the CEO, your attorney was probably an ambulance chaser, right? Like, CEO, I'm sure, doesn't care about that person at all and only cares about you because there's liability. You could win a case against them potentially, right? So consider talking to the CEO if the defense counsel is holding up your settlement. You're in a unique position in that you can talk to the CEO because you're not an attorney, whereas normally an attorney couldn't rep uh, approach the CEO who is represented by counsel. It wouldn't be ethical in most jurisdictions. So that is my recommendation. I hope this helps. I will check the comments below to see if you have follow-up questions. Um, if this video did help, like, subscribe, comment down below. It helps me to help more people just like you. And remember, almost everybody works, but not everybody wins. And that is especially true when you hire shitty attorneys, shitty, silly little boy attorneys who don't know how to groom themselves and don't really know what they're doing. But he was a very good student. It's very obvious. He was a very, very talented student. And that's important, except perhaps in this field.